Now let's deal with the fate of the postganglionic fibers. Again, we have different options for the postganglionic fibers. The first fate of the postganglionic fiber, like this one, is that the postganglionic fiber will return into the spinal nerve and will be distributed with its branches. So this spinal nerve, like say it's an intercostal nerve, like T T1, also participate in the nerve supply of the upper limb. Uh, these fibers, they supply the uh, uh, skin with um, fibers that are pyromotor. Uh, um, in other words, that um, they act on the smooth muscle fibers of the that move the uh, hair. So they are pyromotor. They are uh, pseudo motor. Uh, they cause uh, um, uh, sweating because they uh, act on um, the sweaty glands that are present in the skin. So they are pseudo uh, motor. And also they act on the uh, smooth muscle fibers that are present in the uh, blood vessels. So they are vasomotor fibers. So this is the first option that they go to the skin to supply uh, these uh, structures and act as such pyromotor, pseudomotor, and vasomotor fiber. The second option of the postganglionic uh, fibers, they leave the sympathetic trunk and form visceral branches. So uh, these are these visceral branches in the thorax. They um, supply the lung. Um, they supply the heart as well. So they cause they they form a plexus of fibers, pulmonary plexus of fibers, and cardiac uh, plexus of um, uh, fibers, and they act on the uh, uh, heart and lung. For example, in the lung, they are bronchodilators. They are vasomotor. In the heart, they uh, increase the heart rate. They increase the force of contraction. They act on the coronary vessels in the heart and. Uh, they cause, uh, they are vasodilators for the uh, coronary muscles, unlike the, um, the smooth muscle fibers um, in the blood vessels of the skin. In the smooth muscle fiber, in the blood vessels of the skin, the sympathetic fibers, they are vasomot, vasoconstrictor, but they are vasodilators of the smooth muscle fibers of the coronary uh, arteries in the heart, and they are vasodilators of the uh, smooth muscle fibers of the blood vessels of the skeletal um, uh, muscle. So this is the second option of the postganglionic fiber is that they form plexuses around the viscera like what happens in the thorax and usually um, these, um, uh, um, these efferent uh, fibers that supply the heart and the lung um, usually they um, arise from spinal cord segments from T1 to T4. T1 to T4 spinal cord segments. Now the third option of the postganglionic fibers is that they, they leave the sympathetic trunk and they accompany the blood vessel. Here in the neck we have the carotid circulation, the carotid vessels, and so the postganglionic fibers they will form a plexus that uh, ascend up uh, um, accompanying the blood vessels, these are postganglionic fibers that are going to be distributed to the uh, head. So they um, act, for example, on the f um, um, on the skin in the head. But in addition to that, they also have some effect on the um, on the on the eye. Like here, for example, these postganglionic fibers um, they supply the pupillary muscle. Uh, of the uh, iris, and also they supply the uh, smooth muscle fibers that are present in the uh, upper eyelid. That's why when these fibers are affected, when, when the sympathetic fibers that are going to the head are affected, they result in ptosis, um, they uh, result in uh, meiosis, uh, and uh, they will result in flushing as well flushing of the face. Uh, why? Because these fibers, they supply the skin and uh, they cause vasoconstriction. So if they are destroyed, they will cause flushing of the skin. 
Um, and this what happens, uh, this combination happens in what we call Horner's uh, syndrome. And usually Horner's syndrome results from destruction of the sympathetic trunk in, in the uh, lower down in the neck or in the upper part of the uh, thorax. So for example, if we have a tumor affecting the apex of the lung here, um, this tumor might invade this, the sympathetic trunk which is located behind it and cause destruction of the superior uh, thoracic ganglia and uh, therefore these ascending uh, preganglionic fibers will be destroyed and the innervation, the sympathetic innervation for the head will be affected and the patient will present with ptosis, meiosis and flushing. In addition to that, there will be anhydrosis, anhydrosis because uh, these um, uh, fibers, these sympathetic fibers, they are pseudomotor. So now this is the third uh, option of postganglionic fibers. Again, I repeat the three options of the postganglionic fibers. They either leave uh, the sympathetic trunk and are connected or, or uh, accompany the branches of the uh, spinal nerve to be distributed to the skin, or they leave uh, by themselves and form plexuses around uh, or uh, close to the viscera of the thorax like the esophageal plexus, like the uh, pulmonary plexus and the, like the cardiac plexus or they leave the sympathetic trunk and accompany the blood vessels like a vine tree and will be distributed to the uh, head. Now, uh, returning back to the post uh, the, pre uh, the pre ganglionic fibers, those green fibers, again I would like to remind you that they have three options either they synapse at the same level or they ascend or descend and the third option which I need to uh, talk a little bit about, more about it and uh, that the preganglionic fiber will leave the medial side of the sympathetic trunk without synapsing but it should synapse in another ganglion but not a paravertebral ganglion it's going to synapse in another ganglion which is located in the front of the vertebral column. So if we ima uh, um, imagine that this is the vertebral column and these are the vertebrae here, uh, whether they are transverse processes of the vertebrae, then in the front of the vertebrae, in the abdomen, uh, there is the uh, abdominal aorta, and um, the abdominal aorta has branches, um, uh, celiac, uh, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric branches that arise anterior to the aorta. These preganglionic fibers that are going to produce splanchnic nerves, um, a th a thoracic splanchnic or abdominal pelvic splanchnic nerves, we have uh, three groups of these splanchnic nerves arising from the thoracic sympathetic trunk. We have the greater splanchnic nerve which is uh, uh, arising from spinal cord segments uh, T5 to uh, T9 and the lesser splanchnic nerve arising from um, spinal cord segments uh, T10 and 11 and there is splanchnic which arises from spinal cord segment T12. Now these preganglionic fiber will reach in front of the uh, aorta where there are also there are ganglia at the root of the uh, major branches of the uh, aorta. So I'm trying to uh, draw one of them here around the celiac trunk. So this is called the celiac uh, ganglion, celiac ganglion. And because these ganglia, uh, sympathetic ganglia, are located in the front of the vertebral column, so they are called prevertebral ganglia. So prevertebral and these are paravertebral on either side of the vertebral column. Now, the preganglionic fibers here, which form the splanchnic nerve, like the greater splanchnic nerve, uh, it will continue and reach, uh, the, they go down from the thorax, pass through the diaphragm, and reach these ganglia, the prevertebral ganglia, and here they are going to synapse. Okay? And so the postganglionic fibers here, they will accompany the branches of the um, aorta. 
So, for example, the celiac trunk, it has uh, branches, uh, hepatic artery that goes into the liver. It has a gastric, left gastric artery that goes into the uh, stomach. It has a splenic artery that goes into the spleen. These postganglionic fibers, again, they are going to accompany these vessels, uh, whether branches of the superior mesenteric, uh, uh, branches of the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric or inferior mesenteric, and they are going to be distributed into viscera into the uh, in the abdomen these in the viscera for example let's say it is an uh, a stomach or an intestine uh, let's say and uh, these uh, fibers the uh, efferent fibers uh, uh, they are um, they inhibit peristalsis but at the same time they are motor for the sphincters like for example the pyloric sphincter, they are motor to the sphincter and they are vasomotor um, at, the, uh, at the same time. Now some of these well, there's only one exception of these uh, fibers, the preganglionic fibers, the splan of splanchnic nerves, sympathetic splanchnic nerves. These preganglionic fibers, the one exception is that they pass through the prevertebral ganglia but without synapsing. And these fibers, they go into the uh, adrenal medulla, the medulla of the adrenal gland. And uh, it is in the uh, adrenal medulla that they will synapse, synapse into the cells of the adrenal medulla, um, which are considered as postganglionic cells. But these postganglionic cells, they uh, release the neurotransmitter into the uh, circulation. Now, the afferent fibers, the sensory fibers, which carry visceral sensation, these fibers, they have almost the same root of the efferent fibers and the same, almost the same connections of the efferent uh, fibers. Um, but the difference here is the difference in the um, sensation. For example, um, the quality of the sensation, for example, the somatic sensation includes uh, pain, touch, temperature, vibration, these kinds, these types of sensations, they are not sensed by abdominal viscera or thoracic uh, viscera. On the other hand, for example, in the abdominal viscera, there is sense of distension, for example. There is chemical sensation, for example, like in the stomach, when there is increased acidity. In the heart, the ischemia of the heart uh, cause um, the accumulation of metabolic products, and this will cause uh, uh, pain. Let's take uh, the heart as an example here. The, the heart receives uh, efferent fibers, as I mentioned earlier, from T1 to T4 spinal cord uh, segments. These um, uh, fibers will uh, synapse and the postganglionic fibers, um, they will um, reach into the cardiac plexus. So um, the afferent fibers here will accompany the efferent fibers they accompany the efferent fibers and they pass through the posterior root of the spinal nerve where there is again a cell body within the posterior root ganglia and these fibers will relay in the uh, dorsal horn of the spinal cord. These sensations, the visceral sensations, they differ from somatic sensations. Somatic sensations are sharp, they are well localized, but the uh, visceral sensations, they are dull, they are not that well localized, and usually they uh, are referred. And they are referred to the um, areas of skin, to, or to skin areas, that receive somatic sensation from the same spinal cord segments. In other words, let's say, for example, that this is um, uh, this afferent fiber is reaching spinal cord segment T1, and it uh, uh, carries uh, sensations of ischemia from the heart. This same spinal cord segment also receives sensation, as you can see here, from skin. Sensations of pain, touch, temperature, vibration. So. Um, the central nervous system, the brain, will get confused whether these sensations reaching, reaching this segment they arise from the heart or from the skin area. The perception of, of pain is as if it is arising from skin area. So the pain will be referred to the skin area, to the dermatome here. 
and the dermatomes are dermatomes of T1 to T4, and in this case, T1 and T2 uh, dermatomes, uh, they are located on the medial side of the arm and the, at the base of the uh, axilla. So the pain uh, that uh, arises from the heart, therefore, will be referred to the medial side of the arm. In addition to that, the dermatome T3 and T4 is located on the anterior thoracic wall, so it's also felt on the anterior thoracic wall. This is the reason why the uh, uh, pain uh, is referred to um, these skin uh, areas because the pain fibers that carry sensation from the heart are going to relay in spinal cord segments T1 to T4, and these receive from dermatomes T1 to T4. Uh, these dermatomes are located on the front of the thorax and the medial side of the, uh, of the arm. Let's have another example. The um, vermiform appendix, let's take the vermiform appendix as another example here. Uh, this is the ilium and the uh, cecum, and here we have, uh, this is the appendix. Uh, the sensations arising from the appendix because of inflammation of the appendix, obstruction and uh, distension of the appendix. Um, these will, uh, fibers, uh, they will um, relay uh, or they are connected, their efferent fibers are connected to um, um, uh, to spinal cord segment T10 and not T1. Here we have the connections of these afferent fibers is at spinal cord level T10 and that's why the pain is felt uh, at the dermatome of T10 which is around the uh, umbilicus.